Hello and welcome back to Unknown. Today we're going to take a look at Super Heavy Booster number 4 and we're going to look up a skirt with or without uh, permission and this is going to be courtesy of NASA Space Flight. Do yourself a favor and subscribe to their channel. You can see 24-7 live footage of the Starbase and its developments. I've been lucky enough to be able to put a, together a short video on the progress in terms of uh, uh, the Super Heavy. But before we start, take a look on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see the subscribe button. Uh, please do me a big favor and press that button so you can be informed about Starship and Starbase developments as they happen. The video brought to us by NASA Spaceflight, this booster really is a beast. You can take a look at the size there, compare the size of the guy working next to it, to the actual booster. I wonder who's got the more important job here. Uh, the big boss at the top, or the guy guiding the crane that's moving this extremely large, expensive rocket around. And that's the thing you know about SpaceX that many people don't seem to understand. The whole mission for Elon Musk is to design fully reusable rockets. And not just fully reusable rockets, but rapidly reusable rockets. That's the thing. And that's the big challenge in this whole endeavor. And, uh, well, you can see all the Raptor engines there. And apparently, Booster number four does not have a skirt, so you don't need to look up it. Um, so that's 29 Raptor engines. One of these engines, um, if I'm not mistaken, costs somewhere in the range of 750,000 to a million dollars. And there's 29 of them, so that's close to 25 million dollars, give or take. You might think that's expensive, but if you really think about it, um, the other big rockets, which are not reusable, basically costs a lot more, magnitudes more, than this rocket will cost once completed. And that's the whole thing with Elon Musk, what he's trying to achieve. He's trying to make space more accessible. Um, and he's already achieved a lot of those, those goals. Um, if you look at the Falcon and Falcon Heavy, they are partially reusable rockets. In the words of Elon Musk himself, um, rapidly reusable um, rockets, multi-stage rockets, is like the holy grail of um, space travel at this stage. If you can achieve reusability or 100% reusability, it will open up space and it will actually encourage many more companies to get involved and to invest. Um, although SpaceX is ahead by light years compared to most other companies, um, I think the competition will catch up eventually, uh, not anytime soon I'm afraid, but um, the thing is also with the Starship Heavy, um, with the boosters, the whole project, is that it's made for heavy lift. In other words, you can put stuff into orbit and stuff on other planets potentially that was never possible before. So if this goal is achieved, um, the human race will technologically advance in leaps and bounds. Um, think in terms of the Apollo 11, the Apollo program, the entire Apollo program. Um, I would not be able to speak to you um, if we didn't have those programs. Uh, technology, technology is going to advance in leaps and bounds if this succeeds. So um, I think we've all got an, a vested interest in this thing succeeding.
the actual number of uh, Raptor engines that they have planned for the Super Heavy is 33. Now I imagine that's not a four engines that they want to put in there. It looks completely stacked to me. Uh, it looks completely full. But if you see the view from the bottom, you will see there is potential for more rocket engines to be put in place. It seemed quite strange to me to see the Raptor engines um, like this. It, it looks completely exposed at the sides. I was expecting just to be able to see the cones of these engines. But um, uh, based on Elon Musk's interviews and his words or in terms of the project, he intends to drop unnecessary things. And I think especially in the beginning stages of this, people need to remember that this is still a prototype. Um, this is not an end product that he will sell to customers or a service that he will sell to customers. There's still a lot of, lot of evolution um, going on here and they need to prove that it's going to work first. So for the first um, models of this rocket and the booster, um, there will be a lot of things that seems unfinished potentially. But um, in terms of this specific booster, they want to prove that it can work so they can inspire confidence and potential investment in future. Um, there's many companies and even governments keeping a close eye on this um, and they would definitely invest if they can get a reusable rocket system that can bring down the price tenfold potentially of sending something, something into space or uh, cargo or people to anywhere on earth within half an hour to an hour. That's an incredible feat and I think we need to keep an eye on um, the future in terms of contracts. So if this succeeds, they're probably going to end up getting a lot more money to invest in their own project if other people invest in them. Um, at this stage, remember SpaceX is a private company, which is a good thing according to me at this stage. Um, less interference, the only problem being that you, need, you still need approvals from um, FAA for your flight uh, plans and so forth. One of these Raptor engines, it's one of the ones closer to the center or the other side of the, of the booster. Um, if you look careful, carefully, at some point you'll see R2-D2. There's a picture of R2-D2, that character from Star Wars, drawn on one of the cones. <laughs> I think these guys have quite a big task in order to uh, get this rocket booster into place on the launch platform. Um, I would like to know the specifics because you can't really see inside the launch platform uh, because now at the moment they're lifting it. And keep in mind, this heavy booster has a weight of 160 tons when it's empty, like there. So, um, it's quite a powerful crane they're using and I think they'll continue using that crane for a bit. The launch tower that you see next to it is still in progress. It's still being built and to a degree designed. And as per Elon Musk, um, in terms of engineering, there is nothing as a perfect design. Every design is flawed. It's just a question of how much. Now can you imagine how much that uh, rocket booster is going to weigh fully filled with a starship on top of it? This is really incredible footage. So if you want to see live footage like this, um, this is, for instance, not live. Um, this is a clip from 
earlier yesterday when they actually put it onto the launch platform, the orbital launch platform. Can you imagine what it's going to look like when they actually do a static fire on all 29 of these Raptor engines? Remember before any flight, any rocket flight, they have to do a static fire, which is when they basically start up these engines. On the previous model, the booster number three, they actually did a static fire on three of these engines um, and it was quite a sight to be old. Imagine once they do a static fire on a booster like this with 29 Raptor engines. If you live anywhere close to Boca Chica, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel like an earthquake basically. Um, but in general, I think the people saying to those by are quite happy about, about SpaceX being around the area because they invest in the area and Starbase is basically turning into a city and it's actually drawing tourism and it's drawing people, it's drawing attention and that in turn basically creates an income or an additional income economically for this area. You can see these guys guiding the rocket booster with their ropes, guidelines or anchor lines. Um, I think they've got, got quite an important job at this stage to get that thing into the launch platform without damaging it. I, I do not want to be one of these guys uh, if they damage one of these engines. Like I said, that could be 750 to a million dollars. But I think they did quite well. As you can see, the rocket booster is almost in at this stage. Well, I think these people have a lot to be proud of. They're reaching milestone after milestone at this stage. Now it's all about getting this booster in the air and to prove that it actually works or it's going to work and once it does they're going to make history in a big way the actual um, flight plan for this um, i knew that they're gonna splash down somewhere close to hawaii off the coast of hawaii um, but i actually listened to the guys of nasa space flight as they were talking earlier this morning and it seems like the booster obviously is going to lift the uh, okay for those of you that don't know the booster is the big section this section that they're actually putting onto the platform at this stage um, its job is to make sure the starship gets to orbit orbit but practically a starship can actually get to orbit but it would be pointless uh, going there without the booster because then it would not be able to carry that much cargo which would well, supersede the point. So the booster lifts the starship into the atmosphere and then returns, but it does not go out of the Earth's atmosphere. So then the booster returns and the starship goes into orbit. Um, but the plan is for the booster to slash down, uh, I think about 20 kilometers from the coast of Boca Chica, Texas. And then the starship will go into orbit and it will uh, re-enter as far as I know and it will splash down about 100 kilometers or so off the Hawaii coast in the Pacific Ocean. See how carefully these guys are guiding the booster in. And another thing to take into account here, there's a lot still to do in terms of infrastructure here. Um, the launch pad obviously is not completed yet. Um, 
I think this is like a trial for them to see how things are going to work, uh, to know what they need to change so they can change it. Um, also the launch tower, once the booster, well for now the booster is going to splash down in the, in the ocean somewhere, uh, like 20 kilometers from the coast of Boca Chica, um, which means it should be an Atlantic Ocean. But the idea is that the booster would return to Starbase and the launch support tower is going to have catch, a catch mechanism of some kind and this catch mechanism is going to catch the booster as it comes into land without landing eggs. Um, quite the feat to pull off once they do it if they don't change their plans but that's the plans as far as I know. There's a beautiful shot from underneath the starship where you can see all the engines and Elon Musk actually tweeted uh, so if I'm not mistaken these pictures and like I said this is courtesy of NASA space flight so please do yourself a favor and subscribe every now and then they'll have uh, something else uh, um, not just a normal live stream but there will be people talking at times and explaining what's going on but yeah there's a lot of infrastructure still to be developed at the Starbase and um, a lot of it is still being designed um, that's one thing I like about Elon Musk and the way he operates. He doesn't wait, um, he takes action and edits his actions according to what works and what does not. A very practical way, if I'm, no, according to me at least. But the thing is also, you saw how long it took to get the booster to the launch pad, uh, the orbital launch pad. It took like four hours and Elon Musk, and Elon Musk wants to make this uh, reusable within an hour or something so in other words this thing needs to land be refueled and checked and needs to take off within an hour or two um, so they're gonna have to work on new ways of getting boosters moved around um, except if they don't catch them obviously um, if they catch them it sh should not be a big problem but obviously they're always gonna have to move boosters around so you're gonna have to work on uh, how they move these big things around um, I'm not sure if the booster uh, will be picked up by the launch tower as well to be placed on the launch platform in future, uh, which is probably a possibility, but that's going to be interesting to see how they operate with that. So yeah, this is the end of the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this bit of information. I find it, I find it fascinating personally, and I can't wait to bring you more of the same. And I plan to do it uh, on an almost daily um, basis, maybe every second day. And all the launches I will bring to you live. And remember, at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side, you'll see my logo for the channel. Please press it if you are interested in more updates like these. And also subscribe to NASA Space Flight. As per star man, don't panic and stay safe.